This video is brought to you by the Roll for Combat officially licensed actual play podcast and their new Agents of Edgewatch adventure, and the Deck of Many and their Hecna 5e campaign book on Kickstarter now. Hello and welcome to the Gallant Goblin. Today we've got the second epic encounter box from Steamforged Games. Many thanks to them for sending us this set to review with you. This box has everything you need to run a fun adventure for your group, including an adventure book, a double-sided map, and a big old dragon mini. This set is a follow-up to their first epic encounter, Shrine of the Cobalt Queen, and can be used as a second half of that adventure. So you can connect the two to have a two to four session mini campaign, or you can run each one separately. This set is actually designed a little bit differently than the Cobalt Queen set, and we'll get into those details in a second. So let's go ahead and get our adventure started by taking a look at what's inside the box. The Dragon Mini itself is pretty impressive. He's standing atop a treasure trove of gold, which is nicely pre-painted for you. There are some other items poking out of the gold pile, like daggers and swords, so when you go to paint your Mini, you'll want to add a little paint to those as well. The dragon isn't removable from the gold pile or the base. According to the Steamforge Games website, the dragon is 4.5 inches or 11.6 centimeters tall and has a wingspan of 11.8 inches or 30 centimeters. He's on a gargantuan sized base, which is 4 inches by 4 inches. That would be the correct size for an ancient red dragon according to 5e rules. The dragon arrives in three pieces. The wings attach quite easily and stay in place once attached. You certainly don't want the wings falling off of your dragon in the middle of combat. That's just so embarrassing. The set also comes with a set of tokens. First, we have 16 Firebrand Kobolds in two different varieties. These are especially useful if you don't have the first epic encounter box, Shrine of the Kobold Queen, which included the Firebrand Kobold Minis. There are also two Lava Pool tokens, which cover a 2 by 2 inch section of your battle map. The tokens are all single-sided with just black on the back. You also get a double-sided map of, naturally, the layer of the Red Dragon. The maps are roughly 15 by 23 inches as measured by the subtle grid. Both sides feature this ancient volcanic cavern and many of the same features in a different configuration. You have lava pools, mounds of gold and treasure, and piles of old dragon teeth. One side does feature the entrance to the cavern with a bit of sunlight spilling in. The real treasure in this set, though, is the encounter book by writer Richard August and the team at Steamforged Games. Again, he's made an encounter that can be played by characters at different levels by modifying a few DCs and damage dice according to a handy chart. The main difference between this set and the Kobold one is that this one has less of a story attached to it. The Red Dragon doesn't have a name and doesn't have a specific agenda. This is the generic Red Dragon. What they provide is all the information you need to make a a well epic encounter with the red dragon of your choice. There's dragon rumors, layer information, terrain hazards, and dragon strategies and tactics, role-playing tips, new cinematic actions for the dragons to take in battle, loot info, and things like that. But it'll be up to you to weave this red dragon into your own adventure or to write a story around the set. But let's say that you're playing Storm King's Thunder. This is a perfect set to use if your party seeks out the Red Dragon Cloth, who is a pretty big part of the story, but who doesn't have a lot of words devoted to what happens if your party lands at his doorstep. Just pick up the set, adjust a few things according to the text about Cloth's personality and stat block, and you're good to go. You even have a mini and the maps, as there really isn't a mini for a cloth out there just yet. So let's talk about exactly what's in the book in a little bit more detail. There's a page with a list of information that your players can discover about red dragons through research or investigation or interviews or communication with their gods or what have you. And the information here goes beyond what's in the monster manual, but it's all consistent with 5e lore on red dragons. There's another page with six different story hooks to help you weave this short adventure into your ongoing campaign if you buy the set without a specific red dragon in your story already in mind. And there's a wealth of information about the layer, how the dragon behaves, what its priorities are, and how it views interlopers. There's a discussion about how to portray its volatile emotional state and how that might be reflected in his combat tactics. The author also provides some options for ways to make the dragon's layer a little more intense, from sweltering heat to scorching light to choking fumes to how the heat affects the party's equipment. 
And as we saw on the map, the terrain features a number of unique elements from stalactites to lava pools to huge piles of gold. It's up to the party to decide how to take best advantage of those terrain details, but the book explains how the dragon navigates those aspects of its home and uses them to its own advantage. There are mechanics attached to the features though, so if your party wants to throw a fireball onto the ceiling to dislodge a number of stalactites to fall on the dragon, well, the mechanics are there for that. But it's just as likely that the dragon might grab someone up with his tail and throw them into the same stalactites, and well, those mechanics are mentioned as well. Next, the book walks you through what would happen depending on whether the party decides to stage a frontal assault or a stealthy tactical advance or just approach with empty hands and an honest heart. In that case, the dragon just waits for them to approach and then, you know, sets them all on fire. Now, for the combat itself, they provide you with the stat blocks for a young, adult, and ancient red dragon. These are the same stat blocks that are in the basic rules of the monster manual. However, in lieu of the standard layer actions, you're given new and revised ones that utilize the map and the tokens you're provided, like creating new lava pools on the maps and summoning forth some of those firebrand cobalt minions. For those of you who use the provided tokens, you can do that, or you can use the cobalt minis from the first epic encounter set. The stats for the firebrand kobolds are also provided. They also provide you with four new and powerful abilities for your red dragon to use if you see fit. These include a focused fire breath attack on just one creature and a surprise tail whip for anyone who tries to get behind the dragon. This is a great way to throw off the expectations of your party, especially if they're already super familiar with the standard red dragon stat blocks. But perhaps my favorite part of the book are those four new cinematic moments. They provide you to just drop into the fight to make it more memorable. I'm gonna leave you to discover most of those for yourself in the book, but I'll spoil just one. Let's say the fight is going pretty poorly for your red dragon and the first time in its life, the first time it fears that it may lose its life and its treasure hoard. The irascible red dragon would rather destroy its own hoard rather than let some worthless humanoids claim it. So as a last desperate, desperate move, it'll lunge toward its gold, superheat it, and use its tail to whip it off in a deadly arc toward the party, not only dealing massive damage, but destroying a large part of its collection, denying it from the adventurers. It's pretty great, huh? So there are three other moments just like that described in the book. Finally, they bring it all together with a great chart detailing how the first few rounds of combat would go, maybe. Describing the uh, abilities that the dragon might use and why. And it also gives a flavor of the actions, such as what it might say to the most obnoxious adventurer before unleashing a devastating attack on him or her. This is such a great set. Not only does it have the actual tools you need to, to run the adventure, like the minis and the tokens and the maps, but it gives you all the information you need to run the encounter from both a mechanical and a narrative perspective. This is designed to make sure that your encounter is memorable from a storytelling perspective, which is the most important thing in my book. And reading through the wealth of ideas they provide on just this one creature, it should give you ideas and inspiration for how to take your other cinematic or climactic encounters and your adventures and improve them. You can go beyond what's in the monster manual or your campaign book to surprise and delight your players. So that's our first epic encounter boss box from Steamforge Games. It should be available on October 12th, 2020 for an MSRP of $49.95. They also recently announced two new epic encounter sets. First, we have the new minion box, Halls of the Orc King, which takes place in a frozen tundra environment, so it's perfect for your Icewind Dale adventures, and it's going to again be paired with a boss box, Caverns of the Frost Giant. Those sets are expected in late November, and we should be able to give you an early look at them as well, so be sure you're subscribed to see that. Let me know what you think of this set in the comment section down below. Many thanks to our sponsors for this video. First, we have the Roll for Combat podcast, which just launched their new Agents of Edgewatch adventure. Now, Agents of Edgewatch has one of my favorite first encounters of any adventure I've read. It completely turns the tables on your expectations. As I record this, episode zero and one are out now on the Roll for Combat feed to see what I'm talking about. If you've listened to it, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. If you prefer to binge listen to entire adventures all in one go, I can recommend their play throughs of the Pathfinder Adventure Extinction Curse and the Starfinder Dead Suns Adventure, which I'm playing through right now. Those should 
both give you dozens and dozens of hours of entertainment. Learn more, join their Discord, and see what other adventures they've gotten themselves into at RollForCombat.com. Our second sponsor is a deck of many in their Hecna campaign book on Kickstarter. We're into the final two weeks of the fundraising campaign, so it's a good time to check it out. They have a whole host of goodies to support the adventure book, from dice to minis to maps to reference cards and more. Hecna is a campaign setting and a level 1 to 10 adventure using 5e rules that takes place in a dark carnival known as the Rebellia. The art is fantastic and creepy and it's just unlike anything I've seen in a D&D adventure. If you like that Halloween style vibe in your adventures then this one's right up your alley. And they have options for all budget levels from the PDF version of the book with printable reference cards, maps, and standees all for 20 20 bucks, all the way up to full box sets and additional add-ons depending on your budget and gameplay preferences. Use the link in the eye up in the corner of the screen or in the video description down below to learn more. They also have a free playtest document to see exactly what to expect from the final book. Go check out Hecna today and let them know we sent you. Many thanks for watching today. We've got a lot of cool things to show you over the next coming weeks, maybe even a surprise or two. If you enjoyed the video today, please consider clicking that little thumbs up button down below and sharing the video with your friends. Get all the latest news and hints of things to come on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Otherwise, stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. Goblin.